TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel struck multiple targets in the area of Damascus overnight in retaliation for the planting of improvised explosive devices along the Israeli side of the border with Syria. The Palestinian Authority announced its decision to resume security and civilian coordination with Israel in light of an Israeli assurance that it remains committed to past agreements with the Palestinians. Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi hosted his Bahraini counterpart Abdul Latif bin Rashid al Zayani today for a first historic visit to the capital of the Jewish state. The Israeli Air Force conducted a retaliatory bombardment in Syria overnight, targeting a number of installations belonging to the Syrian army and Iranian proxy militias, including the Islamic Revolutionary Guard's elite Quds Force. The attack occurred several minutes after 3 a.m. this morning when multiple military targets were struck simultaneously, including weapons caches said to belong to Iranian proxy militias in Damascus, the Damascus International Airport, in the area of the town of Saida Zainab and the city of Al Kiswa, in rural areas south and southwest of Damascus, and in the border region of Al Kunetra Governorate. In a futile attempt to thwart the Israeli strikes, the Syrian military triggered its aerial defense array, which consequently drew a bombardment against the regime's air defense center and other relevant installations, causing significant material damage. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, during the strike, storage facilities, headquarters and military compounds were struck. In addition, Syrian surface-to-air missile batteries were also targeted. The Israeli military further highlighted that all of the struck military targets belong to the Iranian Quds Force and the Syrian Armed Forces. According to the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, three Syrian officers and members of the Air Defense Forces, five militiamen of Al-Quds Corps believed to be of Iranian nationality, and two other militiamen who are suspected of being either Lebanese or Iraqi, were killed in the Israeli bombardment. It further noted that the death toll is expected to rise further as the attack left several persons injured, some in serious condition. It is important to reiterate that the bombardment came as a retaliatory response to yesterday's incident, in which IDF forces located a number of improvised explosive devices, commonly referred to as IEDs, which were believed to be planted by unidentified militants on the Israeli side of the border's Alpha Line with Syria. Several hours after the IEDs were defused, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz concluded a tour of Israel's northern border with Lebanon, during which he visited the IDF's northern command, where he received a security briefing and a situation assessment by Israel's top military brass. Toward the end of the tour, Jerusalem's top defense officials seized the opportunity to warn both Lebanon and Syria that they will be held accountable for any act of aggression directed at the Jewish state from their respective territory. להגיב בצורה חמורה לכל אירוע שלא יקרה, הן בחזית הלבנונית והן בחזית הסורית. לפני מספר שעות גם התגלה מיטה נוסף בגזרת רמת הגולן. סוריה אחראית לנעשה משטחה, כדוגמת המטען הזה, בשטחה, כתוצאה מהברכות האמל"ח, שהן בדרך לחיזבאללה. זה לא יכול להימשך וזה לא יכול also addressing the press, Minister Michael Biton, who serves in the Israeli Defense Ministry, highlighted Jerusalem's efforts to bolster the preparedness of the civilian community along the Israeli northern frontier 
to increase the population's readiness for a possible scenario of a northern invasion. צבא הטרור של החיזבאללה, זה מחייב אותנו להכין פה את האזרחים בצורה ראויה לכל אפשרות של מצבי חירום. לפני כחצי שנה שר הביטחון ואנוכי ביקרנו פה את ראשי הרשויות, ראשי קו העימות. הם הציגו בפנינו אתגרים אזרחיים ביטחוניים, הראשי שבהם מיגון הקילומטר הראשון של הבתים. פרויקט שהיה תקוע שלוש שנים בממשלה, שחררנו 100 מיליון ואנחנו נשחרר עוד מאות מיליונים למיגון בתים פרטיים ובתים משותפים בצפון. פעולה שנייה זה השלמת כל כיתות הכוננות במרחב הצפון. פעולה שלישית, הקמת מרכזי חוסן. Turning to the West Bank city of Ramallah, where the Palestinian Authority announced its decision to resume security and civilian coordination with Israel, Six months after the leader of the Palestine Liberation Organization, President Mahmoud Abbas, severed ties with Jerusalem over declared Israeli intentions to extend its sovereignty over significant parts of the West Bank, including the Jordan Valley and the biblical districts of Judea and Samaria. According to Palestinian Minister for Civilian Affairs Hussein al-Sheikh, the decision to resume cooperation with Israel was made after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office sent a letter to the Palestinian Authority reaffirming its commitment to signed agreements between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization. We have a letter to the Israeli government to explain the agreement between Israel and the Palestinian Organization. I think that this letter is probably that some of the people who say that I will not 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 say that. ولكن من يقرأ التاريخ لا يدرك أهمية هذه الرسالة. هذه هي الرسالة الأولى في عهد نتنياهو. Minister Al Sheikh further claimed that the so-called deal of the century has been effectively nullified, since Ramallah believes that a presumed shift of power in Washington will be to the benefit of the Palestinians. It is important to mention that the announcement to resume cooperation between Israel and the Palestinians. was made in tandem with a phone conversation between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the presumed U.S. President-elect Joe Biden. Netanyahu's office released a statement on the matter which read, quote, Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke this evening with U.S. President-elect Joe Biden. In a warm conversation, the President-elect reiterated his deep commitment to the State of Israel and its security. Prime Minister Netanyahu said that the special bond between Israel and the U.S. is a fundamental component of Israel's security and its policy. The statement further noted that the two agreed to meet soon in order to discuss the many issues on the agenda and reiterated the need to continue bolstering the steadfast alliance between the U.S. and Israel. Elsewhere in Jerusalem, Israeli Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi, who hosted his Bahraini counterpart, Abdul Latif bin Rashid al-Zayani, for a first historic visit to the capital of the Jewish state, welcomed the decision by the Palestinian Authority to resume its cooperation with Israel and called upon the Palestinian leadership to return to the negotiating table. I welcome the decision yesterday by the uh, Palestinian to resume cooperation with Israel. Cooperation, security cooperation. Our door is open to renew negotiation, and I urge the Palestinians to step through it, this door with no precondition and to start and maintain a dialogue. Minister Ashkenazi further welcomed the newly forged peace agreement between Manama and Jerusalem. Uh, this visit uh, by the foreign minister of Bahrain as the head of the uh, first official a Bahraini delegation ever to Israel marks yet another historic day in the Middle East. Uh, the whole region has undergone a huge positive change in the last few months, and your visit here today is a symbol of the peace that all of the Israeli has dreamed of. Abdul Latif bin Rashid al-Zayani, for his part, highlighted the discussions that focused on the importance of regional stability and the fight against terror. We discussed a range of bilateral issues on which our two countries can work together, noting 
the need to achieve a genuine and lasting peace in our region. We addressed the importance of regional stability, as well as the need to combat terrorism and extremism, and to build in its place a culture of dialogue and understanding. The Bahraini top diplomat also seized the opportunity to extend an invitation to his Israeli counterpart to attend the Manama Dialogue meeting, which will be held in the Bahraini capital early next month. It is interesting to know that the Manama Dialogue meeting is regarded as one of the Middle East premier security summits scheduled for the 4th until the 6th of December. It is a unique meeting of ministers and delegates from the Middle East, Europe, North America and beyond, including delegates from countries that do not have normalized relations with the Jewish state, including, most notably, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Bahrain in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.